Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Omniverse of Nick and part 23 to the McQueen Walking Dead story, the semi-final part to this tale. I'm your host, Nick. And like always, before we get into today's episode, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the Omniverse of Nick channel, and comment your favorite part or parts of ongoing or past stories, as well as future recommendations for what-ifs and general discussion you might get to see on the channel in the future. With all that out of the way, we're going to be getting into a decent bit of action today, resolving the quote-unquote final threat of the Walking Dead universe in this story, covering up a lot of explanation, and getting ready for the finale next episode. So, let's get into it. At Alexandria, there has been a lot of developments since after the whole Whisperer deal and Negan seemingly surviving his throat bite from Rick only to get killed in the, like, most out of there and yet completely normal Negan twist. Uh, so, I'm going to be going through all the families, relationships, and groups since I feel that it's that time to finally make it all come together and explain it. So, like this picture here, you guys are going to be confused, want details. So, where better to put all that than the semi-final part? Let's get into it. We get into the Grimes family tree. We got Rick and Jesse who are together, Carl and Mika who are together, McQueen, Morgan and Andrea who are together, Ron, Enid, Megan, Sam, Judith, Thunder, who is Rick and Jesse's kid, Althea, and Carl and Mika's child, who I really didn't come up with a name for. I would more or less just call her Lori or like Carl Jr. Or something that Mika would find respectable. But anyways, this is the Grimes family tree. Now keep in mind, I know you guys are gonna be questioning one certain aspect. Why is Althea here? She was Morgan and Grace's Fear the Walking Dead's unborn kid that died. There was a whole episode about it. Well, two things why I put her. Number one, because it makes sense because even though Morgan and Andrea are together, I still felt like them being together and having a kid would work out. So, I put Althea in, but that's not all. Number two, because Althea was never really, like, born born, we didn't get to experiment with her character. It was all a hallucination, a dream, a figment of Grace's mind. So, creative liberties. So, that's why I more or less thought that Morgan and Andrea, Althea was a good fit, a good name, a good person to put in. And by the way, she would only be five years old. I just had that picture to work off of her. I could have just put a little baby girl or something like that, like Carl and Mika's kid, but I felt like just for closure on Althea's character, more or less. I think I have a few what ifs planned for her in the future. Anyways, next, Daryl. He would pretty much just be friends with Connie because they never got into a relationship. They were just really strong friends, so that would apply here. Then we got Spencer and Rosita who would have a kid for the first time in any of my stories. Now, whether or not she would name this kid Coco is beyond me, but I feel like she would stick with that name or just name the kid something else. Then we get Bob and Sasha. Now, throughout all these years, past the six year time skipping onward, Bob would talk to Sasha about having kids, seeing the Grimes family and just the possibility of it. Would Sasha be down for it? And Sasha would always smile at this, not knowing how to answer, what really she would want. And after all this time, she would finally come down to the realization of two factors. Number one, kids that she has seen die. She doesn't want to be putting a kid, number two, into a situation of the apocalypse that they would just die. It's uncertain. Unborn, you could die. Just to a walker, they could die. And Sasha's resolve 
to herself and Bob would keep her from wands and kids. I kind of touched upon that in what if Glenn lived instead of Maggie. So, yeah. Then we get Tyrese and Karen. They have a kid who I'm going to call, for the sake of this, I'm going to call him Basil. Four years old. His name's Basil. I just feel like it would be a good name for Tyrese and Karen. Then we get Carol, Ryan Samuels, and Lizzie, who is still not a freaked out person because the main root of her freaking out was because her dad died, mainly, if you put the dots together. So they'd be living happily. Then we get the re family circle. Glenn, Maggie, Herschel, Dale, and little Herschel. So that would honestly be a really nice family tree like the Grimes one. Then Tara and Denise, King and several others wanted closure on Tara, so there you go. She is with Denise, they're both alive. So yeah. t Dog's also still around, for those who didn't know that, and he's just by himself, more or less. He doesn't have anyone because I couldn't find anyone to, for him to hook up with. And we get into one of the big threats coming up here, the Reapers. Pope would have heard about the communities at this point, strong and way, 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 way vast in numbers. And then from a few of his men, he hears about rumors going around about these communities. Something comes up, a car. Now Pope wasn't interested at first, but then he caught ear of one of his people saying, it could talk. It could move on its own, and it was like a person. And now Pope, he honestly found these rumors to be trivial and acts of, like, insubordination and just complete and total out there things against the word of God, stuff like that. And would honestly probably go like Alpha and kill one of the soldiers, but it would eventually rise to the point where every one of his men would start talking about it, along with the communities. So at one point, Pope, is his patience has run out. So he tells his Reaper folk that they're just going to go to the communities, car or no car, to put this fairy tale nonsense to bed, take all of what they have, and keep the word of God within them and the world. And that they go to do. But waiting for them above, on patrol, Lightning Queen soars up above. Now, wait, 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 wait. I can see a million people right now asking, okay, how can he fly? How in the world can McQueen fly? Well, for one thing, it's McQueen. And like the entirety of this story, in, in The Walking Dead and just his design and what the cars in the cars world are capable of, I'm think I'm pretty much allowed to put in creative liberties. But by this point, six going on seven years, it's all thanks to Rick, Daryl, Eugene, Dale, Merle, Dr. Jenner, Jim, and so many others. I think that he would be able to sustain small flight at least. So again, I think I'm allowed to make some creative liberties at this point. Especially with Mater, who could become a freaking spy truck. I think I'm allowed to do this. So, he soars up above on patrol and sees the Reapers coming towards them. Now, Pope sees this up above. He cannot believe what he has seen. Some fairy tale nonsense that was, eh, Pope? But he's not deterred. This just actually motivates him to yell at his men to get the Hawacha and shoot this abomination, this act of treason against God down now and anything around it and around the area, which they do. Everything around McQueen, at McQueen and completely surrounding the area is caught in explosions and flames and rockets and fire until all the woods and area around the Reapers, McQueen, and whoever else would be in that vicinity is burned to the ground. And at this point, Pope seeing the sense of urgency and feeling victory at his hands, yells at all of his men to 
brush the communities now. And they begin to do so when they begin to hear something, a voice and a revving of something soaring up above. McQueen bursts out from the smoke and flames almost unhurt and rushes towards all the reapers from up above, soaring down, making a crashing entrance and approximately killing every single reaper, including Pope in the area. Not even giving Rick or anybody a chance to help fight alongside, because at this point, McQueen is a one-car fighting army, if that wasn't completely obvious. He just soloed the Reapers. So, yeah. This is McQueen's biggest moment yet in the story, and it's the semi-final part. When we get to the Commonwealth, Lance, Pamela, and that whole deal, it starts out, quote-unquote, Okay, but like the majority of my stories with Rick being around and all that stuff, it don't last long. Lance is killed. Now, Pamela, I feel if McQueen and other characters, especially Rick being around, she could be killed, but it honestly doesn't matter. The, for the fruits of it, it's honestly up to you guys, especially when I continue with this setup in the future. Spoiler. And Sebastian would be killed also. After that... Ezekiel being the governor and Mercer being the lieutenant governor, all that, along with many leaders, families, and all that going on, that would all go the same. Many of what happened in the original Commonwealth would remain the same also, and what would go on would only change with the characters that are still around and McQueen. So, yeah. One year later, after peace has been thriving in the Commonwealth and everything that's been going on, McQueen is with Rick, and he's down. He's sad. And Rick can see this, and he sits down to talk to his friend, because like McQueen, Rick doesn't like seeing McQueen upset or in a state of peril or downness, and asks him, what's wrong? We've been thriving here. What could you be so sad about? And McQueen smiles and agrees with his friend that, yeah, he shouldn't be sad. And honestly... He is really honestly amazed with how far he's come in a world that at first he was completely unfamiliar with. He honestly didn't think that he'd ever be friends with someone. He can finally say that. Someone outside of his world filled with cars. And he honestly could not ask for a better friend in Rick Grimes to make that come to fruition. But and he trails off mid-speech because it's like he's trying to remember or that he's too upset or scared to say what he wants to. Then he does. He tells Rick that despite all that, he wants to go home, his home, and that it's been so long and he misses it. He misses everyone there, everything. And he asks Rick not to actually get on him, but he asks Rick if he remembers the other part of his promise. McQueen helping him in his world to get it back to a state of true happiness and then get him home. And Rick, after hearing all this, his eyes grow wide with surprise and shock and realization. Rick Grimes had spent so much time with all of these revelations, all of this bad stuff, Shane, Morgan, the saviors, all this stuff, getting to this point that he had forgotten part of his word. He had forgotten about getting McQueen home. And he actually feels really bad for this. And Rick said he can't not express how sorry he is after hearing this. McQueen's not holding it against him, but, like, Rick feels bad now. But he, Rick is a man of his word. So he tells McQueen, they're going to right this wrong right now. And now that their world is fixed, kind of, they are going to get McQueen home. And Rick gives McQueen his utter word as his friend, his protector, his guardian, whatever the frick you want to call him. And McQueen smiles, the biggest smile since Rick rescued him. But then McQueen has the shock 
and realization wash over his face because he realizes something. The portal that brought him here, he barely could make out how it happened, what it was, or what happened after he got there. So he asks Rick, how are they going to replicate that event? How are they going to bring some kind of portal to get him home and it be the right one? How are they going to make that happen? It seems impossible. And he actually gets scared of this, but Rick, he is not going to give up trying. And he radios to Mercer to have the entire Commonwealth and everyone around help out because they are getting his friend, Lightning McQueen, home no matter the cost. And Rick gets into McQueen's seat and they all drive off with Mercer, the Commonwealth, and everybody to scout the world, to find every single resource, person alive, and everything at their disposal because the Commonwealth and the communities aren't enough. The world is now going to be put on the test to get McQueen home. How will the tale end? How did you like this episode? And what is your favorite part so far? With all that out of the way, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the Omniverse of Nick channel, and comment your favorite part or parts of ongoing or past stories, as well as future recommendations for what ifs and general discussion you might get to see in the future. Next episode is the finale, which will get McQueen home. It's going to be a long one, so you are not going to want to miss out.